The Daihatsu Materia is arguably the most unique small car choice you can make. It's also a highly practical one, using its square styling to the max in offering a spacious interior with typical Super Mini MPV practicality. There's some nice detailing as well, and although you're in no danger of being blown away by the performance or the economy, for its charm, you can forgive it almost anything. For some time now, the people who design our small cars have been embroiled in a quest for the most space-sufficient shape possible. Of course, we already know what that space is. Nothing maximises interior roominess while keeping exterior dimensions manageable, like our old friend the box. The only snag is that no one really wants to drive around in one. For years now, we've seen uh, uh, overhangs shrink and roof lines rise as various small cars and uh, compact MPVs evolve in boxy directions. But no one has yet made it hip to be square until this car arrived, Daihatsu's Materia. Cars like this are big business in Japan and the US, but they're a relatively rare sight here. I challenge you to find another car that for 11,000 pounds will get you more attention as you drive down the high street. It's rare indeed for such a, an, an eye-catching, attention-grabbing shape to be also such a practical one. This material taking on conventional super mini MPVs like uh, Vauxhall's Mariva and Renault's Modus. Super minis with an added dash of practicality, but also cars that undeniably, to some extent, trade fun for sensibility. Is it possible to have both? Let's find out. Here's a car that's most at home in its own natural environment around town. And now on longer journeys or at speed on country roads, it feels slightly less comfortable. But then that's not what it's for. Horses for courses and all that. That's when you notice that the 102 brake horsepower 1.5 litre petrol engine needs revving to produce its best, at which point refinement starts to suffer. Still, it's a willing enough unit, um, originally developed for Toyota's Yaris as well as Daihatsu's own Terios 4x4. Uh, Resta 60 takes um, 10.8 seconds in the uh, manual model or 13.7 seconds in the four-speed automatic that I've got here. Top speed is 106 miles an hour. Now the material's handling characteristics have been tweaked for European tastes with the addition of the front anti-roll bar that the Japanese market does without and firmer suspension. As a result of this, plus uh, the uh, beefier than normal tyres and uh, the relatively light weight, this car changes direction very quickly, which is great for darting in and out of spaces in city traffic. It, it also helps that you have this high seating position uh, with great visibility, except for when you're trying to park and you've got these rather thick C pillars and a relatively small amount of rear window. So it's just as well that Daihatsu fits parking sensors as standard. At least that stubby nose gives you a very tight 9.8 metre turning circle. Daihatsu maintains that this vehicle has established a cult following in the markets in which it's offered for sale, and it's easy to see how it might. The, uh, the squared off styling and flared wheel arches are extremely distinctive, and uh, there's a squat, low slung look, um, despite the fact that this vehicle is actually taller than super mini rivals like Renault's Modus or Vauxhall's Mariva. That square boxy look is further enhanced by the narrow glass house and the high window line that rises towards the rear of the car. Recent Daihatsu products have ditched the traditional wafer thin plastics and cheap detailing of budget Asian brands in favor of Toyota source switch gear and sturdier build quality, although it's still not quite up to the standards of the best of the brand's rivals. Still, within their necessarily restricted budget, I think Daihatsu's engineers have done actually quite well with this cabin, which incidentally is as spacious as the boxy exterior suggests. The front passenger seat can be folded nearly flat so that longer items can be poked through. And by adjusting all the various seating permutations, you can even create a kind of makeshift bed. At the wheel, uh, all the main functions fall uh, fairly easily to hand. Although it's a pity that the uh, steering wheel itself doesn't adjust for reach as well as for height. The rear bench can be reclined 
backwards to send kids to sleep on longer journeys. Plus it can slide forwards and backwards by uh, 160 millimeters so that you can adjust the ratio of uh, rear legroom to rear load space. At the back, the uh, loading floor is flush with the bottom of the tailgate so you can easily lift large items in here and slide them in. Although if they're gonna be really big, then you don't really wanna be traveling more than two up because there's only 230 liters of luggage space in here. Still, you can extend that to 619 liters by pushing forward these split folding rear seats. There are also a large amount of cup holders, uh, one in each of the four doors and then uh, two in the center, plus a big one in the boot. Entries and exits are made uh, simpler by these deep door openings. And there are some impressive interior detailing, including the liquid black finish and the plastic stereo surrounds, the spooky blue lighting that's in the front uh, door armrests here, and the halo lighting around the front uh, stereo speakers. List prices suggest that you'll pay somewhere in the 10 and a half to 12,000 pounds for your Daihatsu Materia, depending on your choice between manual and automatic transmission, and whether you go for the extra cost metallic paint. Now those figures put this car up against uh, conventional super mini MPV competitors like uh, Renault's Modus, Nissan's Note, Citroen's C3 Picasso, or Skoda's Roomster. But the same amount of money will also buy you a cheap small MPV based on a van. Cars like uh, Peugeot's partner TP or Citroen's Berlingo Multispace, maybe a Renault Kangoo. With one engine and a single trim level, choosing your materia should present few problems. Most buyers go for the uh, manual model, but the optional four-speed automatic may find favor amongst city drivers. Now, in other markets, this car has been targeted at buyers looking for the extra space and practicality that a super mini MPV provides over a conventional super mini, but without the frumpy image. Now, this model seems to fulfill that remit very well, and although it may be destined to live out its life as a niche market product here, it does bring something fresh to what is a quite a staid market sector. Standard equipment levels leave very little to the imagination when you think about the price that we're uh, talking about here. You get to alloy wheels, air conditioning, uh, an MP3 uh, CD stereo. You've got uh, a split folding rear seat with Isofix child seat mountings. These uh, rear privacy glass to make you feel like a film star, remote central locking, and uh, the front fog lamps. Safety kit runs to anti-lock brakes with electronic brake force distribution and twin front and side airbags. We've been conditioned to expect headline grabbing economy figures from small diesel engines in the super mini MPV sector and the materials lack of a diesel option may put some buyers off. Its petrol unit isn't especially economical either, returning around, uh, well, just over 39 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle. The CO2 figures are fairly average too, uh, 169 grams per kilometer from the manual and 176 grams per kilometer from this four-speed automatic. Uh, Group 8 insurance is also well above the average. Still, running costs today are as much about residual values as they are fuel economy. And here the materia should do rather well, certainly better than the 40% after three years return that you get from Daihatsu's more conventional Syrian Super Mini. Toyota's influence on uh, build quality and reliability should help here as well. All models come covered by Daihatsu's standard three-year unlimited mileage warranty, and uh, they also come with a clever regenerating, self-regenerating catalytic converter that gives it a much longer life. For what it's worth, there's no doubt in my mind over the identity of the funkiest small car you can buy. It's this one. The fact that hardly anyone you'll ever meet will even have heard of a Daihatsu Materia, let alone owned or driven one, only adds to the exclusivity of its appeal. Of course, Daihatsu could stick in a diesel engine, bring the handling up to snuff, stuff in some high-tech equipment, maybe even lower the price. Part of me, though, rather hopes that they don't. This car was never destined to be mainstream, deserving instead to remain a, a rather well-kept cult secret. I love it. Mm.